it's going to be a totally awesome talk. And Lars Lauder is going to talk about it's going to be strong coherence. And <laughs> <laughs> one high screen. Yeah. Um, I don't know what a division ring is. <laughs> Speak up. Tell the whole room you don't know. I don't know. I, well, I'm, I'm, I'm just telling the online participants. <laughs> no. no. I don't even, are there even any? Do they exist? There are two right now. Two, oh. Division? Two division. <laughs> Apparently, there are infinitely many division rings. Um, yeah. So I want to kind of give a sort of the kind of the lay of the land um, and kind of offer up a, a, a picture of what a, a one relator group looks like. Um, and this all kind of happened by accident and it's really cool. And if we'd known what a division ring was, we wouldn't have done it <laughs> because we would have stopped and that would be that. So. It's kind of good, good to be, good to be uh, ignorant. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with some, uh, some examples. So, uh, and they're pretty, pretty simple. So, let's start with the genus two surface. Um, and uh, of course, it's, uh, um, it's a, it's a one relator group. So you do the usual thing. Um, so, so this is say x. X, Y, Z, W, and you kill the product of commutators. Cool. Um, okay, and now uh, this thing has lots of lots of uh, subgroups, um, and they come in uh, they come in two two flavors. So they're the uh, um, they're the uh, uh, well, there's the trivial group. So three flavors. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they're the uh, uh, subgroups with. Um, uh, infinitely many ends. So the, these are the freely decomposable ones. And, uh, and then there are the, the finite index ones. Uh, finite index isn't really important here. The, the, the important thing is that they're, they're one-ended. Okay. Um, and uh, of course, so every, every, uh, every subgroup is represented by, by, a, by, a, by, a, by a covering space and um, the covers are uh, tiled by um, tiled by copies of the relator, and I can't draw an octagon, but you get the you get the idea. Yeah, um, and uh, the important the important feature that that we have in in this case is that uh, there's a kind of um, there's a there's a, a compact core, and so I'm going to draw it with kind of smooth smooth looking edges, but you should really think of them as being bits of the bits of copies of the octagon. Okay. Um, and the, the main feature these have is that uh, say you take take some compact uh, subset that sits inside here uh, that um, that that carries the entire fundamental group and uh, those those compact subsets will have a um, uh, will have a uh, will have a free face. And in particular They'll they'll actually uh, collapse down to a down to a graph, um, and uh, uh, that's a Y. <laughs> it's the 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 angle is determined by the the glyph that you do know. <laughs> yeah, Henry. <laughs> How many of my talks have you been to? Yeah. <laughs> are, those, are those two letters there? Is that indicating this is freely decomposable? Freely de decomposable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, um, and the uh, so th this thing has rank four. Uh, so the the fundamental group is generated by by four elements, and. Um, if you have a uh, so if, if say you have a, a subgroup um, a subgroup of this of the surface and the, and the rank of of h is I know this all sounds really trivial sorry rank is less than less than four um, then you're then you're guaranteed to be uh, then you're guaranteed to be in this case okay um, and uh, the other thing to know is that uh, um, 
if you're uh, if you're one ended, uh, so so the the number of uh, one ended uh, subgroups of say rank uh, uh, less than some fixed number n is 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 uh, finite. Okay. Uh, in in uh, and and where does the, uh, the 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 finiteness come from? It it really comes from comes from a uh, uh, multiplicity of multi. In this case, it comes from multiplicativity of the of the of the Euler characteristic. Um, and in particular, as the as the as the um, as the rank goes up, the the number of two cells in a in a complex uh, representing the subgroup uh, also goes up. Uh, yeah, also goes up. Okay, so this is the um, this is the this is the, the the negative case. Okay, okay, and now uh, so here we are in. So let's look at the the, the characteristic zero case. Um, so here the the prototypical example is of course just the the torus piled by a piled by a, by, a, by a square. Um, and here of course the, the the subgroups come in two flavors. You've got uh, Three again, the the infinite index ones, uh, which are uh, annuli, and then uh, the finite index ones, and they uh, they all have the same rank, uh, but you have no control over the number of two cells. Um, and then uh, there's uh, the, so the, the the next type is the sort of torsion. Um, and uh, so what do these look like? So, so here the kind of cheapest cheapest example is, um, is uh, I'm going to draw. I will draw it like this: a torus with one one orbital point that has a, a cyclic of order two attached to it. Um, okay, cool. Uh, yeah. Where was it going? Yeah. Uh, so these these ones they 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 kind of want to be. Um, they 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 want to be over here, right? Um, so these uh these have some some geometry. So uh, by the uh, Newman spelling theorem, these are uh, uh, these are small cancellation, uh, and uh, in particular they're hyperbolic. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, yeah. So what's the so this guy? What am I doing? I'm so so this group. This is just x y, and I kill the uh, kill the commutator, and this one is uh, y, kill the commutator squared. Okay. Sort of normal, normal thing to do. Yeah, and so the the universal cover of this of 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 this one, um, it's really the it's really the hyperbolic plane uh, tiled by octagons, but you have to kind of you have to double every octagon. Okay, and the next example um, is uh, the free ones. Uh, okay, and these will these will show up. Um, so here's a. I always have to do this manually. Okay, so a a e a. B. Uh, okay, so take a b uh, and kill. Uh, a a b a b. Okay, so here's an example. This is a this is a primitive element. Uh, so this is a this is a primitive, meaning a part of a basis in the free group of rank two. And this is just uh, isomorphic to. to okay. Um, all right, and. Uh, what does the presentation complex of, of this thing look like? Well, it's a it's kind of a funny picture. So you take a you take a disk, and then there are going to be two sub arcs of this disk uh, that are going to read off the same the same letters, and they're going to get glued together. But, all right. Okay. And then the last uh, the last uh, class of groups I'm going to look at are say the the the, the three manifolds. Okay. 
Um, so uh, there's some there's some overlap. So in here, um, you have say one uh, what is it one bridge? Two bridge. Two bridge. Oh, one bridge is here. Yeah. <laughs> Two. Two bridge knot complements. Um, and those, of course, of course, uh, of course, of course, live over here. Okay. Um, so these, uh, so so over in this in this area, um, these often uh, these often have um, often have hierarchies. So there's the like the Hawken hierarchy. Uh, so your manifold, you can you have your manifold, and you can cut it along some surfaces, and cut those along surfaces, and cut those along surfaces, and keep going, and eventually you just get down to just get get down to some some three some some balls. Um, and the story is similar over here. So uh, Marco mentioned this in his talk yesterday. So uh, one relator groups have have uh, what's called the the Magnus. Uh, uh, Moldovansky. How do you? I don't know how to spell that. <laughs> Sorry, I apologize. Kind of, yeah. He's not. He's. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm trying to grow up a bit. <laughs> no, Henry, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. So. Uh, yeah, right. Um, okay, so these guys, uh, um, so the, the Scott, uh, so that's the Scott Shalen theorem says that, uh, that the, that the, that the fundamental group of a, of a three manifold is, is, is coherent. Um, and, uh, there's a kind of uh, what did you, Marco? What did you call your thing? It's like three step plan, four step uh, recipe. recipy. Yeah. So there's a there's a re there's a um, so there's a, there's a recipe uh, for 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 proving that that the three manifolds are coherent. That we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna borrow. Okay. Okay. So now. Uh, it's a kind of remarkable new theorem of Linton and I don't know how to say Heiken Zipirin. I'm I'm not gonna try. I can't do it. Yeah. Um so so Marco um Andre. How do you spell it? <laughs> have 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 uh, proved that uh so we saw a very nice talk yesterday that um that things over in this in in this area are 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 coherent um and previous to that henry and i proved that um so so uh proved that uh things in in the in the, in the negative regime are 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 uh, what I'll call strongly coherent, meaning that um, there are uh, finitely many one-ended subgroups of any given any given rank. Okay. So, uh, so here's the kind of lay of the land, and what I want to convince you of is that all one reliter groups kind of like fit into these kind of nice classes in some way. You meant by strong coherence. Just uh, uniformly or just boundedly many one-ended subgroups of a given rank. Yeah. Um, so in so that's so that's definitely not true. Not true uh, in the the in the characteristic zero case. So that's the that's the picture. If you if you get if you get bored, you should work out the the hierarchy for this guy. That's actually kind of fun. So it's uh, it's uh, it's a cute, it's a cute exercise. And then work out the hierarchy for this guy. <laughs> what time did we start? 
think it might have been around 10 or 8. Okay. I feel like I've exhausted my time already. I haven't even said anything. I'm not going to say anything, so that's fine. I'm glad Donnie's not here to make fun of my erasing. That's what I'm really happy about right now. All right, so the, um, so here are the, uh, some ingredients. I'm not, uh, it's too close to recipe. <laughs> yeah. So I wanna, so first things first, I wanna talk about uh, non-positive. Negative relations. They're like another piece of chalk. Oh, there's. So here's uh, here's Wise's definition. So uh, two complex uh, X has um, uh, non-positive immersions if, uh, say, for all uh, compact. Uh, connected um, uh, complexes immersing in X, uh, either Y has negative or like uh, non positive Euler characteristic, or, uh, or Y uh, is, is homotopy equivalent to, to a point. Um, so the, the, the earliest example of this um, is. Uh, um, it's called Linden, uh, Linden, Linden asphericity. It's a bit stronger than what I'm going to say, but it's 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 fine. So so he showed that if if X is um, the the presentation complex uh, for one related group, uh, then uh, then X has uh, um, no. <laughs> I didn't bring that. Then, then, then X is uh, is uh, a spherical, and that sort of more or less corresponds to the case when when um, you're looking at uh, uh, maps from the uh, maps from the maps from the the two sphere to maps from the two sphere to X. Right. So. Um, so, you need to you need to look at a class that's slightly broader than. Versions, but it's it's fine. And yeah. You're looking at torsion three. Yeah, 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 yeah. So let me, uh, yeah, torsion three. TF stands for other things, but yeah, yeah, torsion. Okay. Um. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So so one kind of. Uh, uh, yeah. So so. So NPI really 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 implies uh, a a sphericity. Yeah. Okay, so our new definition. Um, I wish I could. You know how some people put like they write things down and they they edit them, but I want to kind of like unedit it. Like I want to get rid of the end. Yeah. You can't add. You can't. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Okay. So yeah. So let me do this. Um, so. Too complex. X has negative immersions. If for any compact connected thing, immersing. Uh, this is. I'm going to put the immersing in quotes because it's not quite true. Yeah. Because um, we need things things stronger than immersions. Um, then either the characteristic is um, strictly less than zero. So get rid of the. Lesser equals or y is homotopy equivalent to a point or yeah I'm getting there yeah I'm not I'm not there yet yeah this is not uniform negative immersions this is you're talking about Wise's definition this is not Wise's definition yeah this is not Wise's definition of negative yeah this is this is the definition <laughs> <laughs> modulo the quotation marks. But this is, yeah, why is this definition doesn't work? No. For reasons I'll um, explain in a bit. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so so before I get, get in, go too far, I wanna define um, uh, the, the primitivity rank. So this is, 
so we we my p's look like d's and marco's d's look like p's um yeah so this is so so henry and i stumbled on this this definition and then it turned out it had already been been looked at um and it's uh, kind of a natural natural thing so so i take a, a free group f and uh some element w and then uh, so i define the primitivity rank of of w so this is the minimum of uh, the ranks of subgroups h in f such that um w is contained in h as a non primitive element so so not not part of a not not part of a not part of a basis um, uh, so see some examples so Let's say W is uh, a power. Uh, then the then the primitivity rank of uh, the primitivity rank of W is is one. So here we're in the here we're in the the, the torsion case. Okay. Um, and then uh, um, the if if W is primitive, then uh, then this this sets this sets empty. So and then the the min of the the empty set is positive infinity, right? Um, okay. Uh, give a couple examples. Uh, it's not like pi. Of, uh, this one always this one always tripped me up. Yeah. Um, yeah. So here's uh, uh um, so here's the bouquet of three circles. And then um, here's a subgroup. Uh, there's a, a theta graph. So we start here. So A, B, uh, C. So here. And then the uh, this this uh, I can I can represent this map by a, a circle uh, immers immersing in here, and it it factors through factors through this immersion. And uh, and uh, you can easily check. So this is this, so this element is just the the, the commutator in here. Right? So it's in particular, it's not it's not primitive. So 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 the the thing to 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 take note of here is that the um uh, uh, the the primitivity rank it's 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 less than or it's either infinite in which case you're primitive, or it's less than or equal to the rank of the the uh, of the ambient group. But it can definitely be. It can definitely be. Definitely be smaller. Okay. Yeah. So the uh, the theorem. Um, so the the negative emergence theorem is. Uh, I never know how to state it. Henry, help me. <laughs> yeah. So so suppose um. Uh, the the primitivity rank of W is uh, greater than or equal to um, greater than or equal to to three. Uh, then um, then X the presentation complex has uh, uh, has has negative emergence. Um, and then uh, I'll 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 kind of beef this up in a bit um, to, to to uniform. But we need to 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 change some 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 things. Okay. Um, so uh, the 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 main um, well, let me get, let me give an example first. So so take uh, take um, take uh, say the free group on on uh, say A and B um, and. Uh, Kill the and and then look at the word uh, a a uh, b a b from from before. So this is uh, it's it's primitive in here, okay? and I can uh, I can attach a attach a two cell along that word to um, to to get a uh, to get a get a two complex. Okay, and now I'm going to take this this graph and I'm going to immerse it in a um, in say the x y rows. Uh, no, I said X, Y, Z rows. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, and I'm not going to do an explicit example, but you have to believe me that you can do it and it will work. Okay. Um, so what I what I want to do is choose a choose an immersion f uh, f uh, which is complicated uh, such that um, uh, maybe I should call it v such that uh, w equals f of v uh, as primitivity rank three. Okay. So you can do something. You can do something something like this. Okay. Um, so. Just to kind of illustrate the, the so so now the, the the space I want to build will be x um, so it's it's this this rose uh, union uh, union union that two cell okay um, so the uh, um, um, so the um, the theorem is that uh, spaces like this have have negative emergence. And this example shows that you need to uh, allow unfoldings to graphs in order to make it in order to make it work. So here the um, so this 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 complex naturally immerses in this one, and it has this one has characteristic characteristic zero, um, but it doesn't have any free faces, so it doesn't collapse to a graph in an obvious way. But it does it does unfold to a graph because we've we're in this subgroup of, of, of rank. We're in this subgroup of rank two. Right. Okay. So that's 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 how that's how that that, that, that works. Wait, can I... No. Please. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. So so okay, so that word A A B A. Yeah, it's primitive I... in that subgroup. Yeah. In that subgroup. But it looks like it's in a graph. Oh, it's really nice. Yeah, so I'm going to subdivide this, and I'm going to write x's and y's and z's on it, but I'm not going to do it explicitly. But you can, you can, like, yeah, it happens. Like it's easy to write down examples. I just didn't. It's annoying to check, so you can compute the primitivity rank pretty, pretty easily. You just go through all the graphs that immerse that contain it, and uh, has to. Has to be surjective, obviously. So there's like a bound on the number, and then you just go through them and it's like, okay. Right. You email Chris Cashin. Yeah, you email Chris Cashin, and then he he says, yes, it has primitive three. <laughs> That's how it works. I couldn't ever get his software to work. That's like good software. Email Chris. And it's kind of like recursive, like bits of it depend on things. I don't know. You have to like put it inside. I don't know. It's like you had to use the package. I don't know. I couldn't make a word. Yeah. Yeah. Can you say one more time what this is an example of? So assuming you're so this so this is this is to yeah. So this is to show that um uh, uh so 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 when we when we when we prove non-positive emergence, what we really prove is that uh, the characteristic of x or characteristic of y. Do you have y immersing in x? What we really prove is that uh, characteristic of y is less than equal to zero, or um, y uh, actually collapses to a graph or collapses to a point. So you see free faces, right? Actually collapses, um, and uh, it's just not it's just not true here. Right? You don't you don't get to collapse to a graph. So you have these kind of like bad bad. Uh, subgroups of characteristic zero, right? And of course you can take cy like cyclic covers of that thing or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yes. This is also an example, right, of why this doesn't have why in the Yeah, so I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get to that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so let me, uh, um, let me talk about Peter Scott. Scott's like, yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, so our 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 recipe um, kind of follows idea. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so here's so here's so so we we start with a a presentation complex of the 
of, a, of one related group and um, we take a, a subgroup of we take a we take a, a, a subgroup okay and our our first move is to construct a, a sequence of um, to, to construct a, a sequence of uh, of, of pi one surjective uh, immersions. Uh, representing H. Okay. Um, all right. So cool. So I learned this in, like everything, I learned it in 2004 from Laden. And that's true. The master. Okay. So here's our, here's our, here's our, here's our, here's our, here's our move. And what would be really nice, um, it would be super great. So it'd be cool. It would be it would be cool if the um, the the number of two cells of the YIs were uniformly bounded. Uh, that'd be great because uh, the pigeonhole principle says two of them will be the same. <laughs> And then you can stop. Yeah. So what you do? So you, you start by immersing a immersing a graph in in X, and then uh, I want to add a I want to add a two cell at each. I want to add a, a genuine relation at each stage. Added like something that's really killed, and then I'm going to fold. Um, so in particular, they they won't be they won't be pi one isomorphisms, right? Um, so if 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 this if this goes forever, then they won't be pi one won't be pi one isomorphisms. So if I had a, a uniform bound on the number of of two cells, then I'd be super happy. Okay. Um, but it's just not true. Uh, so I, I don't know. Here's a stupid example. So let's let's represent the trivial subgroup of because I don't I don't know like I don't know anything about my subgroup. Right. So here's like. You know, I can represent the trivial subgroup in Z squared. And I'm just not being very smart, right? Yeah. <laughs> but you have to like account for stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so the problem here is that this thing, these things have, uh, these things have free faces. So these things are all collapsible, right? So I want to, I want to assume, uh, so, so safe assumption, is that the um, no free no free faces? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, but this is still uh, it's still just not true, as this example shows. Right? Um, so uh, if I look at the um, uh, look at look at look at this guy, then um, let's take the take the the universal cover um, so um, oh wait two uh, and then I have to do three right this is a little tedious I should have done it before yeah yeah and then um, and then our uh, our loop so here's my a what is it a a b a yeah, so this so this 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 yellow thing is getting uh, a, a, a disk attached to it, right? and um, now I'm just going to take take uh, none of this crap can happen, but I don't know how to prove it. Yeah. yeah, so you can just take take finite cheated covers, and then they all have this sort of this sort of form. So there's no there aren't going to be maps between these things, but we don't know how to rule it out. Uh, so we need to we need to we need to get get rid of this 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 kind of this kind of this kind of phenomenon. Um, you could also do something like take a kind of deep subgroup. Uh, so immerse that in in X, and then you could stick like take a take a, a chunk of this um, and sort of stick it on, so you can kind of build arbitrarily large things with the same number of generators 
as many two cells as you want. Right? So you need to need to need to rule this out. Um, so these 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 groups are are both um, these are these are freely decomposable. Okay, and now it's, Scott's move is to um, observe that you can you can get away with uh, uh, just looking at uh, freely indecomposable uh, freely indecomposable groups. So what is what is uh, so let me make a definition. It wouldn't be talk about coherence without this definition, right? So yeah. Sorry, Marco. <laughs> so take that back. Yeah. Wouldn't be a talk about strong coherence without this definition. Except three manifold groups are not strongly coherent. So. I need a even stronger coherence. <laughs> yeah. So so let's let um uh H be a be a, a one ended group. Uh, finally generated group. And then uh, um, so uh, an in, in decomposable uh, cover of H. It's not really covering space, it's called the cover. Uh, so it's a it's a pair, it's a A, B, and a surjective map C from K to K to H. Uh, homomorphism uh, such that if uh, if feed factors through a free product, uh, then one of the factors is trivial. So got a map like this, surjective. Um, okay. And Scott's lemma, uh, so 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 the Scott lemma says that um, uh, every Every finitely generated group has has an indecomposable cover. Um, all right, so now we go over here and we're like, well, we want to get rid of that. So we want to assume um, we want to assume that all the uh, all the uh, all the, the the pi ones of these guys. So we want them to be freely indecomposable. So. We take our group H, uh, we write its, you write down its Grishko decomposition. You just do each free factor independently. Okay. Yeah. So then you just, just pretend that your group is freely indecomposable because that's the case you care about. Okay. Um, all right. So now we're going to assume that the pi ones of the, the y's are freely, uh, freely indecomposable. Um, and now, thankfully, Henry already gave a talk about this. We can, uh, once we're here, every finitely group generated group has an indecomposable cover. Finitely. Yes. Every finitely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Every. Yeah. Yeah. How do you choose a K? It's not algorithmic. I don't know. You just pick one. Oh, crap. Yeah. Finally. Finally presented. Yeah, that's a good point. Wait, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> finally presented. It just might not be. It's finally generated. It's just, it's just finally generated. Yeah. You just stop if you're finally presented. Yeah, H is one ended. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we, yeah. So it's, it's, I got that part right. <laughs> <laughs> Is a, yeah, is a pa is a pair. Yeah. Okay. So now, once you get it stated right, yeah. So now, so now that we're here, we can uh, we can assume that the y's are 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 indecomposable uh, in in the sense of Wilton. Uh, irreducible. Irreducible. Whatever. It's just a word, irreducible. It's a terrible word. Yeah, yeah. And let me let me remind you what this what this what this this means is that uh uh um 
you can you you might be able to unfold your complex, but you you never unfold it to one where you see a a cut point in the the whitehead graph of a vertex or a free face, right? So these are kind of like these are tight. It's already used enough, and it's too melodony. Everything is kind of yeah. Okay. Okay. So here I'm. Uh, uh, so this is the uniform uh, negative immersions. Uh, is that? Uh, I'm not going to write row plus because it's not my letter. Yeah. So the the um. Uh, so. So. Uh, suppose that that X has. Uh, 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 negative immersions, so one relator, which is important. Uh, then uh, the the soup of the characteristic. So so you look at, at Y is immersing in in X, and you look at the soup of the Euler characteristic um, divided by the volume, and that's less than uh, some negative epsilon. So, so, uh, so then there exists some epsilon zero. Okay. Um, okay. So this is kind of like uh, um, Donnie's definition, but we need to make sure that uh, these are these are irreducible. All right. And now, uh, so how do we get the um, the cool part? Uh, yeah. So, so just to conclude the the the, the cool part. So, uh, you have you you take y irreducible immersing in in x, and then you know that the characteristic of y uh, is less than um, uh, it's less than or equal to this minus epsilon times the the volume, which is just the number of 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 two cells, and this is this is this is, of course, greater than or equal to. Um, uh, well, this is equal to one minus b one of y plus two of y, which is greater than or equal to um, one minus the rank of y, rank of pi one of y, because uh, these guys are aspherical by Linden. Right. Cool. Okay, so now uh, um, now you rearrange this and. That implies that um, the number of two cells is less than or equal to one over epsilon times. Uh, yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, once we have uh, the the uniform negative immersion, then. Uh, you write down this silly, silly inequality, and you get that the number of two cells in the Ys are uniformly bounded in terms of the rank of uh, the first the the, the 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 first complex, and you're done. Okay. All right. So now you need to think deeply about this part. All right. I guess I'm done. So.